Greetings of the day to all of you. <clears throat> Today we are going to study another very important component of static wire compensator which is called thyristor switched capacitor TSC. I will write here thyristor switched capacitor TSC. We will try try to learn about the circuit diagram and operation of a thyristor switched capacitor TSC. Now uh, the circuit diagram of a TSC is like this. Uh, this is our source voltage V. And we have a capacitor C and we have a pair of anti-parallel connected the uh, thyristors or SCRs something like this the current in the branch or in the circuit is I this is thyristor T1 this is thyristor T2 for positive half cycle of voltage thyristor T1 is you know on and for negative half cycle of the voltage thyristor T2 is on right uh, so therefore uh, this pair of thyristors just like TCR in case of TC, TSC also, it acts as a bidirectional switch, uh, resulting in bidirectional flow of the current. If V is the total voltage, the voltage across the capacitor is VC, and voltage across the thyristor switch, bidirectional switch, let's call this VT. Fine. And now there are certain cases we have to follow. See, uh, remember, uh, this is the circuit diagram or power circuit diagram of a thyristor switched capacitor. The question is, can we fire the thyristor at any instant of time? Can we fire thyristor T1 or thyristor T2 at any instant of time? For that purpose, we have to understand uh, that you know, whenever the thyristor T1 or T2 is fired, it should result in transient free switching of the thyristor switch capacitor, TSC. There should not be any transients. To understand this, I will take different cases. Case A, uh, the switch T is fired, or let me say thyristor switched capacitor is fired, TSC is fired when instantaneous <laughs> applied voltage V is not equal to voltage across capacitor VCO. This will be clear with the help of waveform. Let's assume this is the applied voltage, source voltage, which is AC, like this. This is V. <clears throat> and let's assume that previously our capacitor was charged to this voltage, VC equal to VC naught. So initial charge on the capacitor was VC naught. Say previously it was charged and voltage across the capacitor is this much. Now let us assume I, instead of firing the uh, switch here or here, I am firing it somewhere here, where the instantaneous value of voltage is V dash. Now you can see at this instant when thyristor T1 is fired because this is the positive half cycle of voltage, so thyristor T1 will be fired. Firing pulse is issued to thyristor T1 and T1 will immediately go into conduction. But what happens is that the instantaneous value of applied voltage V dash is much greater than the voltage across the capacitor VC naught. And since V dash is much greater than voltage across capacitor, it will result in a huge current flowing, a large current, something like this. Because capacitor voltage is much less than the applied voltage and it will result in huge current. It may be there for half a cycle or for a cycle, something like this. So this is the current in the circuit. Now the peak value of this current will be very very large and it will put a large stress on the devices. And since thy thyristors do not have any overload capacity, the thyristor T1 or thyristor T2, whichever thyristor is fired, in this case of course thyristor T1, it will not be able to take this current stress, to bear this current stress and thyristor T1 will immediately fail. So thyristor T1 
they'll immediately fail immediately fail due to large current stress current is extremely large it may be you know uh, very very large the peak of this current is very large and this thyristor t1 will not be able to take or to bear this current stress and it will immediately get damaged so therefore we cannot fire thyristor at an instant where v dash is not equal to vc not so v has uh, v when v is not equal to vc not large current transient will take place and that will result in failure of the switch this is case a so this tells us that we should always fire the tsc at an instant when the instantaneous value of applied voltage is exactly equal to the voltage across the capacitor so that we can understand from case b case b will try to see what happens when tsc is switched when applied voltage v is exactly equal to voltage across capacitor vc naught let us try to understand it again with the help of a waveform <clears throat> so with the help of waveform we will try to understand it like this so this is our again this is applied voltage let me take about two to three cycles this is the applied voltage v right <clears throat> now let us suppose this is again vc naught this is voltage across capacitor vc not previously this capacitor was charged and the charge or the voltage across capacitor is vc previously in case a we have seen that when the thyristor is fired at an instant when instantaneous applied voltage is not equal to vc not a large current transient will take place and that will instantly damage the switches and that analysis tells us that we should try to fire the switch this switch at an instant when this instantaneous value of applied voltage v is exactly equal to voltage across capacitor so that is this instant so therefore instead of firing the thyristor somewhere here or somewhere here we will issue the firing pulse to thyristor at this instant so at this instant thyristor is fired which thyristor thyristor t1 is fired and it will go into conduction and current since applied voltage is exactly equal to vc not a large current will not flow a extremely large current will not flow uh, you know a certain amount of current which is a safe value of current will flow something like this and then steady state operation will take place and let us suppose thyristor switch let us call this switch as t which comprises of t1 t2 and uh, let us suppose it is turned off somewhere here at the when the applied voltage has a negative peak so what happens when the thyristor switch is turned on the voltage across you know applied voltage gets applied across capacitor and this is the voltage across capacitor and when current this is current i when this is equal to zero then we stop issuing firing pulses to the thyristors t1 and t2 and this switch t turns off and at that time what is the voltage across capacitor voltage across capacitor is this much so that means the voltage across capacitor is equal to negative peak of the applied voltage so this is the voltage at that time across capacitor if instead of turning off thyristor switch here we would have turned it off here then the voltage across the capacitor would have been positive peak of the applied voltage anyway now the question is when tsc is switched on at v equal to vc not the current is limited it's safe and uh, is the switch t safe let us try to see although current is safe it's not there is no transient current there is no shooting up of current we don't have large current which was the case with uh, when we discussed case a current is within the safe limits but what happens to the rate of rise of current you can see the rate of rise of current is almost infinite the moment thyristor t1 is fired the current immediately you know reaches its maximum steady state value within no time so the rate of rise of current d by dt is infinite it tends to be infinity and you must have studied in your btech basic power electronics course then 
when uh, the, the rate of rise of current through an SCR, when that is greater than critical rate of rise of current, which is given in the data sheet of the SCR, the thyristor fails because of the hot spots created by large rate of rise of current. There are hot spots within the thyristor switch and that results in instant failure of the device. So in this case, since the rate of rise of current is much, much larger, the rate of rise of current is much larger than the critical rate of rise of current, dA by dt critical. Okay, because current rises instantly, dA by dt is almost tending to infinite, infinity. So since dA by dt is much much greater than the specified critical rate of rise of current of thyristor, so it will again result in the failure of thyristor. So the thyristor switch will fail. It will not fail because of large amount of current. Current is limited. But it will fail because the rate of rise of current through the switch is much greater than the critical rate of rise of current. And that will result in hot spots within the thyristor switch and thyristor switch will fail. So you must have again studied in your basic power electronics course that how to you know, make rate of rise of current equal to or less than critical rate of rise of current. Um, how to or how to improve the di by dt rating of an scr that can be done if we add a small inductance in series with the thyristor switch so that will make or that will ensure the rate that the rate of rise of current is safe it is you know um, less than critical rate of rise of current so that we will discuss in case c case c is connect a smaller surge limiting reactor which is also called damping reactor in series with switch with thyristor switch so that rate of rise of current is less than or equal to critical rate of rise of current and there are no hot spots within the thyristor pellet within the thyristor switch and thyristor switch is safe so through the circuit diagram it is something like this we have a capacitor we have thyristor switch comprising of thyristors t1 and T2 in series with capacitor and we have a small inductor L in series with this the current in the circuit is now I this is voltage across capacitor VC this is thyristor voltage or switch voltage VT and this is voltage across inductor now we can see the rate of rise of current will be much less than the critical rate of rise of voltage and thyristor switch will be safe this is again the applied voltage V Okay, <clears throat> let us suppose this is the applied voltage V and our current is something like this here. It is maximum and then here it is zero and then it is maximum. This is I. Then it is zero again. It is maximum negative zero because current in the capacitive circuit leads the voltage by almost 90 degrees although inductance is also there but inductance is very very small it may be a few micro henry's only it, it's, it may not change the phase angle much okay let us uh, assume that the thyristor switch is turned off here so from this instant to this instant if we take this instant to this instant thyristor switch capacitor tsc is on during this period and at this instant, thyristor switched capacitor is turned off because as soon as current becomes zero, you stop issuing firing pulses to T1 and T2 and the thyristor switch will be off and current will stop flowing. You can say current will stop flowing thereafter. And what is the voltage across the capacitor? The voltage across the capacitor in this case, since it is turned off here when the applied voltage had reached its negative peak. So this is the voltage across capacitor. VCO is negative peak and it will retain this voltage 
till next firing takes place till the TSC is turned on again so now you can see uh, from this instant to this instant thyristor switched capacitor TSC is turned off and when TSC is turned off the voltage across TSC is same the voltage across TSC is same as the applied voltage you know this is the applied voltage these are zero crossings this is the voltage across TSC okay <laughs> we can call this this is the voltage across the switch VT this is the voltage across switch as long as switch is on voltage across switch is zero and why does that, that voltage appear almost entire voltage appears across the capacitor so in that case the applied voltage V is equal to VC and when switch turns off the voltage across capacitor is for example negative peak and capacitor the switch is turned off there is no current you can see current is zero the voltage across capacitor is minus negative which is negative peak VCO negative of uh, peak uh, peak of negative voltage applied voltage and it retains there there assuming ideal conditions it will retain this voltage till next uh, you know till TSC is fired again and then what is voltage applied voltage why does that appear that appears across the switch because switch acts as an open and whenever there is an open circuit the applied voltage appears across the open circuit in this case uh, the switch so that therefore the applied voltage when TSC is off is it appears across the switch so it is equal to switch voltage when TSC is on applied voltage V the capacitor voltage VC is same as applied voltage and VT switch voltage is zero during the period when TSC is on and when TSC turns off the capacitor voltage is equal to VCO of course it is negative peak as you can see and VT is same as applied voltage you can see VT is same as yes what about inductor current inductor current uh, sorry what about inductor voltage see inductor voltage will lag the current by 90 degrees if this is the current in the circuit this will be inductor voltage okay it is something like this this is inductive voltage you can show the inductive voltage VL also so therefore this is applied voltage this is inductive voltage this is capacitive voltage the capacitive voltage when the TSC is on is same as applied voltage and at that time VT is zero and when TSC is turned off current in the circuit is zero VL becomes zero VC becomes equal to negative peak of applied voltage and the applied voltage is same as the switch voltage that is same as the applied voltage so therefore you can see when a small inductor which is properly designed which is of the order of a few nano henry only when it is placed in series with this the current within the circuit is you know safe and the di by rate of rise of current di by dt is not infinite it is less than or equal to critical rate of rise of current and there is no failure of that device so this is how a thyristor switched capacitor tsc is turned on so therefore the condition two conditions for safe or transient free turning on of thyristor switched capacitor is that number one the switch should be turned on or the TSC should be turned on when the applied voltage instantaneous value is exactly equal to the voltage across capacitor and secondly a small inductance should also be in series with the thyristor switched capacitor for making DI by DT less than or equal to a critical rate of rise of current for safe and transient free switching on of the thyristor switched capacitor TSC okay a small bit of mathematics let us assume applied voltage v is equal to vm sin omega t sinusoidal voltage therefore what is uh, current in the tsc branch therefore tsc current thyristor switch capacitor current is i is equal to icm it will also be sinusoidal sin omega t uh, sorry it will be cos omega t it will be sin omega t plus 90 degrees because in a capacitive circuit current leads the voltage by 90 degrees and the sin omega t plus 90 is cos omega t so i is equal to icm cos omega t where what is icm it is the peak of the capacitive current icm is equal to it is peak of the applied voltage vcm divided by reactance capacitive reactance xc where what is vcm vcm is peak of the voltage across the capacitor 
and that is given by this formula v times n square divided by n square minus 1 and xc capacitor reactance is equal to 1 by omega c where omega is equal to 2 pi f radians per second we already know that is a capacitive reactance what is n n is equal to uh, n is equal to 1 upon under root of omega square lc and that is equal to under root of xc by xl this is n okay so therefore apply peak value of voltage across the capacitor is v times n square divided by n square minus 1 where n is equal to 1 by under root of omega square lc or it is equal to under root of xc by xl where xc is capacitive reactance and xl is inductive reactance and what is uh, xc since icm is equal to vcm by xc xc is 1 by omega c it is the capacitive reactance so therefore what is the current therefore current in the tsc is icm and icm is vcm by xc and vcm is this v times n square divided by n square minus 1 it is divided by uh, uh, xc xc is 1 by omega c so it is divided by 1 by omega c that omega c will go up so it will be then into omega c and then we have cos omega t so this is the mathematical expression for current in the capacitor in this thyristor switch capacitor tsc so i is equal to v times n square divided by n square minus 1 omega c cos omega t so <clears throat> another very important point is that the tsc is turned off when i is equal to 0 so this is very important tsc cannot be turned off anywhere so tsc is turned off at i equal to 0 when as soon as current becomes equal to 0 i have shown you that in the waveforms and if you want to turn off the tsc wait for the moment when current becomes equal to 0 as soon as current reaches its zero crossing that is as soon as current becomes equal to 0 tsc can be turned off how it can be turned off by making alpha equal to 180 degrees or by withdrawing all the control pulses or firing pulses from both switches of the bidirectional switch so when, when we are not applying any firing pulses, so TSC will be turned off and I will be equal to 0. So TSC, this is the rule, TSC is turned off at I equal to 0. That means at current 0 crossings. Current 0 crossing. ZC means 0 cross. Okay. Now you have also seen from the waveform that when uh, TSC is off and when TSC is off, okay, the thyristor switch voltage, the thyristor switch voltage is same as applied voltage. When the same, when TSC is on, thyristor switch voltage is zero and when TSC is off, Thyristor switch voltage becomes same as the applied voltage. Now TSC, another very important point is that the thyristor switch capacitor is turned on either at negative zero crossing, uh, sorry, negative peak or at positive peak of the voltage because just few moments back we have seen that, <clears throat> for example, uh, when uh, this TSC was turned on, say somewhere here, the current was flowing like this. It was like this. And this, this was applied voltage and this was the current. And uh, as soon as current reached zero crossing, say for example here, we are turning TC, TSC off. And when TSC is off, what is the voltage across capacitor? Voltage across capacitor is equal to negative peak of the voltage. This is the negative peak of the voltage and this is the voltage across capacitor. This is if we turn off the TSC at this zero crossing. But instead of turning it off here, if we would have turned it off somewhere here, again the rule is that TSC is, has to be turned off at current zero crossing. This is one current zero crossing, this is another current zero crossing. If it is turned off at this current zero crossing, the voltage across capacitor will be peak of the negative voltage but if it is turned off at uh, this current zero crossing 
the voltage across capacitor will be positive peak of the applied voltage. In this case, VCO is equal to minus V max, and in this case, VCO is equal to plus V max. And therefore, next time when you have to turn on TSC again, if previously you had turned it off here, the voltage across capacitor is minus V max. Then next time if you have to turn it on again, you have to turn it on when applied voltage reaches its negative peak because here this negative peak of the applied voltage is exactly equal to voltage across capacitor minus V max. Okay, and if previously the TSC was turned off here at this zero current zero crossing for which voltage across capacitor was plus V max, and next time when you want to turn it on again, you have to turn it on somewhere here when the instantaneous value of applied voltage again reaches the peak value because it is exactly equal to the VCO and there will be transient free switch. And therefore, in order to when you turn off a TSC and when you immediately want to turn it on, you have to wait for one cycle. Try to understand this concept. Previously, you turned off your TSC here at zero crossing, current zero crossing. And what was the voltage across capacitor? It was equal to plus V max. And if you want immediately to turn on TSC again, can you turn on it's here, here or here or here? No, you cannot turn on. The rule is that you have to, for transient free switching, just a few moments back, we have understood that you have to turn on TSC switch at the instant when applied voltage V is exactly equal to capacitive voltage. And in this voltage, what is capacitive voltage? It was at positive peak plus V max. So therefore, for transient free switching, you have to turn it on here when the applied voltage V is equal to plus V max because capacitor voltage was at plus V max and that will give transient free switching. So therefore you have to wait for one cycle. Similarly, if you, uh, you had previously turned off TSC here and you want to again turn it on, you have to wait for one cycle that you have to turn it on here when the applied voltage is equal to minus peak of the, apply, uh, apply, when the applied voltage is equal to minus peak because VS, VCO was equal to minus V max. So therefore, from, from turn off to turn, immediate turn on, you have to wait for there is a delay of at least one cycle. And another very important point is that depending upon whether uh, the TSC was turned off here or here, when next time you have to turn it on, you have to either turn it on when applied voltage is equal to negative peak or it is equal to positive peak. It will be very much clear with the help of following waveforms. This is again applied voltage. This is the applied voltage V. Let us assume previously that capacitor voltage was equal to negative peak. Previously you had turned it off at zero crossing of current in such a way that negative peak of the applied voltage was appearing across the capacitor. So VCO was equal to minus V max. Okay. So therefore if you want to turn it on again, your capacitor is previously charged to negative of peak of applied voltage minus Vmax. So you cannot turn it off at any other instant other than when the applied voltage reaches negative peak because capacitor voltage is already equal to minus Vmax and the rule is that when applied voltage is equal to VCO then only firing pulse should be issued to TSC switch. So therefore you have to turn it on here because why here because here so you will issue firing pulse to thyristor switch here because here the instantaneous value of applied voltage is at its negative peak and that is equal to VCO. And when V is equal to VCO, then it will result in transient free switching and current will immediately start flowing through TSC branch. And since current leads the voltage, since current leads the voltage, so this will be the nature of the current. Current leads the voltage by 90 degrees in a capacitive circuit. <coughs> See, this is the current and steady state value. And let us suppose we have now turned it off here. When current has reached zero crossing, say somewhere here, we have turned off TSC. When TSC is turned off, what is the applied voltage? Applied voltage is at positive peak. So this will be the VCO equal to plus V max. And next time when I have to turn on again, 
TSC. So I have to, I cannot turn it on now at negative when applied voltage is equal to negative peak. I have to turn, on, turn it on when applied voltage is at positive peak. Because when V is equal to V max, VCO is already equal to V max and uh, this applied voltage is also equal to peak, positive peak and that will give transient free switching and that I can show in next waveform. This is omega T axis for example. So this is again applied voltage, this is applied voltage V. Now in this case, TSC was turned off here when applied voltage was at its positive peak. So what was the voltage across TSC, voltage, uh, voltage across capacitor, voltage across capacitor VCO was equal to plus V max, positive peak of the voltage. And now you, if you want to turn on TSC again, you have to wait till the instantaneous value of applied voltage is exactly equal to peak voltage, it is exactly equal to plus V max and then here you will issue firing pulse to thyristor switch and it will immediately turn on and it will result in the flow of current and since current lead, capacitive current leads the voltage, this will be the nature of current. So this is I and let us suppose uh, when current reaches zero crossing here, we have turned off TSC and voltage across TSC is now VCO equal to y minus V max negative peak okay so this shows how uh, that whenever that uh, thyristor switch capacitor is to be turned on it is to be either uh, turned on either at positive peak like in this case or at negative peak as in this case okay so positive peak of applied voltage or negative peak of applied voltage for uh, this transient free switching of thyristor switch capacitor Okay. Another very important point is that when a thyristor switch capacitor is turned off, say for example it is turned off here and voltage across capacitor is equal to positive peak or it is turned off here for which voltage across capacitor is negative peak. And we may turn it on say after uh, many cycles say after or after a few seconds or after a few minutes or after many hours. Will the voltage across capacitor when it was turned off here and voltage across it was plus V max, will it be same? No, it will not be same. There is always a self, small self discharge across a capacitor and therefore voltage across capacitor may be slightly less than this positive peak voltage. And similarly, when a, a TSC was turned off here and voltage across capacitor was equal to minus V max and if we turn on TSC for after several hours, the voltage across capacitor will not be exactly equal to minus Vmax due to self discharge it may have reduced by a few percentage so therefore you need to always have a voltage sensor which will give you sensed voltage and it will give you exact value of applied voltage and when your controller knows what is the applied voltage and uh, and as soon as instantaneous value of ap applied voltage is equal to the voltage across the capacitor then only the thyristor switch capacitor is turned on. So for that purpose, you have to follow certain general rules for transient free switching of TSC. I will write here general rules for transient free switching for transient free switching of TSC for transient free switching of thyristor switch capacitor. What are the rules? for transient free switching of the thyristor switch capacitor, TSC. There are two rules, rule 1 and rule 2. Rule 1 or rule A. Rule A is, that will be, if I draw the waveform, it will be clear. This is the applied voltage again, V, 0, pi, 2 pi and so on. And let us suppose previously voltage across capacitor was this positive voltage VCO. This is the voltage across capacitor. Let us call this VC. Rule 1 is that when voltage across capacitor is less than or equal to applied voltage, instantaneous value of applied voltage, TSC, I will write here, when VC is less than or equal to V, 
PSC must be fired or switched. TSC must be switched at an instant when instantaneous value of applied voltage is equal to capacitor voltage or when voltage across thyristor switch which is equal to instantaneous value of applied voltage minus capacitor voltage when this is equal to zero when Vt is equal to zero okay so because uh, you see uh, this is the capacitor this is the thyristor switch T this is C and small inductor is also there uh, most of the voltage appears across capacitor are this what is voltage across the switch Appli voltage across switch is equal to if we ignore voltage across this inductance it's extremely small voltage across switch is applied voltage minus voltage across capacitor so it is applied voltage is V minus VC V minus VC and when will be this VT equal to zero when V is exactly equal to VC that means when this is the instant when instantaneous value of applied voltage V is exactly equal to VC and here you have to fire the switch firing pulse has to be applied to the switch and TC has, TSC has to be turned on because here voltage across thyristor switch VT is equal to zero when I say voltage across thyristor switch is equal to zero so VT will be equal to zero when V is equal to VC because VT is V minus VC when V is exactly equal to VC VT is equal to zero so when V instantaneous value of applied voltage is exactly equal to VC then you have to fire the thyristor switch for transient free switching and uh, that means when voltage across thyristor switch is equal to zero VT is equal to zero so you can put another voltage sensor across the thyristor switch and as soon as voltage sensor gives you the signal that VT is equal to zero your controller will Im should immediately issue firing pulse to thyristor switch and thyristor switch will turn on and there will be transient free switching of thyristor and this is the current so current will be within the at the steady state value and the rate of rise of current will be less than critical rate of rise of current because of this small inductance so this will give transient free switch so this is transit free switching of TSC. So this is rule A. Rule A says that when capacitor voltage uh, is uh, uh, less than or equal to V, okay, then TSC must be switched on at an instant when instantaneous value of applied voltage is exactly equal to capacitor voltage. That means when Vt, which is equal to V minus Vc, is equal to zero. So when this is equal to zero, as soon as your sensor gives a signal to the controller that VT has become equal to zero, immediately firing pulse should be issued to thyristor T and TSC should be turned on and that will give transient free switching of the TSC. This is rule A and rule B is rule 2 or rule B is uh, when capacitor voltage is greater than or equal to peak of applied voltage what is v v is peak of applied voltage it may be positive peak of or negative peak it is peak of applied voltage i am not writing small v i am writing capital v capital v means peak of the applied voltage when capacitive voltage is exactly equal to peak of the applied voltage then tsc must be switched when Vt is equal to Vt min. This will be clear with the help of this waveform. This is omega t. This is the applied voltage 0 pi 2 pi. This is applied voltage V. And your capacitor voltage, let us assume it is slightly greater than instantaneous value of applied voltage or it may be exactly equal to peak value of the applied voltage. Okay normally the chances of capacitor voltage to be greater than peak of the applied voltage are very very small so in the extreme case if the capacitor bank has not discharged then VC will be equal to peak of the applied voltage then your controller should issue firing pulse to thyristor switch here at the peak of the applied voltage always okay here somewhere here so uh, for this VT is equal to VC minus V and it is equal to VT min
if vc is equal to v somewhere here then uh, that is rule 1 and if vc is greater than v peak of the applied voltage or equal to v then um, the firing should be done at the peak of the applied voltage so that is at peak of applied voltage it may be positive peak or negative peak of applied voltage depending upon whether capacitor was positively charged or negatively charged previously right so these are the two golden rules if you design a controller and if your controller ensures uh, follows these rules and it uh, for transient free, free switching of thyristor switch capacitor uh, if it follows these two rules if it uh, fires the or it if it switches the uh, TSC only when VT is equal to VT min or VT is equal to zero, then it will result in transient free switching of uh, your thyristor switched capacitor. Now there is another question. The question is why uh, we have thyristor switched capacitor? Why not thyristor uh, controlled capacitor? Just like we have thyristor controlled reactor TCR and we have thyristor switched reactor TSR. The difference between thyristor controlled reactor T TCR and thyristor switch reactor TSR which we have studied in last few lectures is that in case of a TCR we have continuous delay angle control or firing angle control whereas in TSR thyristor switch reactor we don't exercise firing angle control we the the TSR is either fully on for which alpha is equal to 90 degrees or it is fully off for which alpha is equal to 180 degrees, right? Similarly, why don't we have thyristor controlled capacitor? Why do we have only thyristor switched capacitor? In other words, why firing angle control or delay angle control is not possible, is not possible in TSC thyristor switch capacitor. This is the question. In other words, why do we have TSC thyristor switch capacitor? Why don't we have thyristor controlled capacitor? Thyristor controlled capacitor would have mean would have meant firing angle control or delay angle control. Whereas in thyristor switch capacitor, we don't use any firing angle control. We trigger the TSC at a particular value either at positive peak of the voltage or at negative peak of the voltage or following the rules which have just few moments back mentioned. For firing angle control, your alpha has to be variable. Can we do that? No, answer is no, we cannot do that. The reason for that is, I will have to draw the waveform again. This is applied voltage. Let us suppose previously our capacitor was charged to positive peak. So therefore we have to fire the thyristor switch capacitor at when the instantaneous value of applied voltage reaches its positive peak for transient free switching and TSC will turn on and current will start flowing something like this and this will be our current say so something like this is the current through TSC so for transient free switching I am firing it at the positive peak of the voltage so for which case alpha is 90 degrees you can see from here to here alpha is 90 degrees can i turn it on here at alpha equal to 120 degrees somewhere here answer is no why because if i try to trigger the thyristor switch capacitor here here what is the instantaneous value of applied voltage it is less than the voltage across the capacitor because previously capacitor was charged to peak of the voltage so since the instantaneous value of applied voltage is much less than the peak voltage or it is much less than capacitor voltage, it will result in transient current, huge transient current and thyristor switch will turn off. So therefore alpha control is not possible. Similarly when current has reached zero and TSC has been turned off, we have to fire, next firing has to be done when the applied voltage is at negative peak. We cannot fire our TSC here or here or here because at all other instants for the value of alpha is such that instantaneous value of applied voltage is less than or it's, it's not equal to the voltage across capacitor and when instantaneous value of applied voltage is not equal to capacitor voltage it will result in you know huge transient current and uh, large current stress and that will result in instantaneous damage of the thyristor switch and hence TSC will get damaged.
So that is why alpha control is not possible in thyristor switched capacitor. In thyristor switched capacitor, we generally have alpha equal to 90 degrees because we either trigger our thyristor switch or TSC at uh, you know positive peak of the voltage or at negative peak of the voltage. Only one value of alpha is there. Only one instant of firing is there. Alpha control is or alpha variation is not possible, which I have just few moments back explained to you. We have to fire the TSC either at positive peak here. We cannot fire it at anywhere else or we have to fire it at negative peak of the applied voltage if capacitor voltage was previously equal to minus V max. We cannot fire it at any other instant. So alpha control is not possible in thyristor switched capacitor. That's why we don't have thyristor controlled capacitor. We have only thyristor switched capacitor where no alpha control is there, no delay angle control is there. So therefore, this tells us that thyristor switched capacitor, since delay angle control is not possible, thyristor switch capacitor acts as a discrete branch with i equal to i max at zero so it acts as a single admittance single value admittance i will write here since alpha control or delay angle control is not possible a tsc branch acts as a single admittance it does not act as a variable admittance like thyristor controlled reactor which was acting as a variable susceptance this does not this has a single value okay it will be clear with the help of this graph so this is for example applied voltage v and this is the capacitor current ic and so for example sorry this is v this is vc max maximum capacitor voltage and this is maximum capacitor current. Why I am showing capacitor current negative? Because capacitor generates the reactive power and if inductor current is taken in the positive direction, capacitive current you have to take in the negative direction. That's why I am showing it negative. So therefore, it acts as a single branch. So for example, um, the TSC does not have alpha control. So capacitive reactance or admittance is not variable. It's not uh, that would have been variable if alpha control would have been possible. Since at only one instant we have to fire the TSC branch, alpha control is not possible. It acts as a single admittance, single value admittance. And this VC max is the maximum voltage across the capacitor bank. And IC max is the maximum current uh, through the capacitor bank. And this VC max and IC max are dictated by capacitor and device ratings, device maximum ratings. I mean, you, your TSC may draw a law, current equal to IC max corresponding to a voltage VC max. This VC max is the applied voltage and this applied voltage and this maximum current through the TSC branch is IC max, it will be determined by what is the maximum voltage rating of capacitor, what is the maximum voltage rating of thyristor switches, what is the maximum current rating of thyristor switch, that will be, so that will decide what will be VC max and what will be IC max, what will be maximum value of applied voltage and current through the TSC branch. Now if you want to, you know, uh, uh, make uh, uh, variable admittance, if you want to make a TSC not a single admittance so for variable admittance for variable admittance the rule is that instead of using single TSC say for example this is our single TSC use a number of TSCs in parallel this is one TSC use another TSC like this so on this n number of TSCs depending upon what is the re how much reactive power has to be compensated this is the applied voltage v and this is tsc1 this is tsc2 tsc1 tsc2 and so on this is tscn this is ic1 ic2 so on and this is icn if only one tsc1 is on it will act as an admittance it will produce certain value of capacitive admittance if second tsc is also turned on 
So it will add two admittance. Total admittance will be this plus this. If third admittance is sorry, third TSC is turned on, your admittance will further increase. And if n number of TSC switches are turned on, your admittance will go on increasing. So therefore, when to continuously control admittance, many TSC branches are connected in parallel. It gives it varies the capacitor reactance or capacitor admittance in a stepwise manner, not continuous manner, stepwise manner. For example, with one TSC, TSC1 only on, this may be value of admittance. For TSC2 also turned on, it will increase in a step manner. For third TSC, when you turn it on, your total admittance, so it increases or it decreases in a step-like manner. If you turn off third TSC, then your admittance will come back to this. If you turn off this TSC, then it will be same as this. So the admittance can be increased or decreased in a stepwise manner if we have many TSC branches in parallel. So that is about thyristor switched capacitor. So we have learned that in a thyristor switched capacitor, first of all, for transient free switching, why do we use thyristor switched capacitor, first of all? Because if you are, if on a transmission line there is a huge inductive reactive power or lagging wires flowing due to poor power factor of the load, due to large reactive power demand by the load, then uh, reactive power compensation has to be done by this thyristor switch capacitor. It is connected in parallel with the transmission line or bus and it injects the desired amount of reactive power into the bus and compensates for load reactive power and hence helps in maintaining the bus voltage constant. Of course, it is to be used in uh, tandem or in uh, along with the thyristor controlled reactor TCR okay because if it uh, injects certain amount of reactive power a part of that reactive power may have to be got absorbed by TCR and uh, for transit free switching of this thyristor switch capacitor I have told you that the TSC has to be turned on at an instant when instantaneous value of applied voltage is exactly equal to voltage across the capacitor because capac maybe previously capacitor was charged either to positive or to negative value so whenever the applied voltage uh, instantaneous value of applied voltage or bus voltage is equal to the voltage across capacitor it has to be fired and the small inductance has also to be connected in series uh, for transient free switching and for ensuring that di by dt rate of rise of current is less than the critical rate of rise of current for safe switching of the thyristor valves okay and then i have discussed with you two rules golden rules for transient free switching of tsc first is that tsc when if uh, the voltage across if uh, voltage across capacitor is less than the peak value of voltage then the tsc has to be turned on at an instant when instantaneous value of applied voltage is exactly equal to voltage across capacitor or when voltage across thyristor switch Vt is equal to zero. Second rule is that if voltage across capacitor is greater than or equal to peak value of applied voltage, then uh, the TSC branch has to be turned on either at positive peak of voltage or at negative peak of voltage for which Vt is equal to Vt min. So. Um, you have to use two voltage sensors, one voltage sensor across the capacitor bank and another across the thyristor switch. And those sensors will tell you the status of capacitor voltage and status of voltage across the switch. And whenever switch voltage is equal to Vt min or it is equal to zero, your controller should inst instantaneously issue firing pulse to the thyristor valves for transient free switching. And then we also discussed that uh, TSC is to be turned on either at positive peaks of the applied voltage or at negative peak of the applied voltage. And when TSC is switched off for a longer period, the capacitor back may partially get discharged. And then for transient free switching, the TSC should be switched on when voltage across capacitor, uh, thyristor switch is zero. That means when instantaneous value of applied voltage is exactly equal to capacitor voltage, which is one of the rules. Okay. And then we also, I also discussed with you that uh, this uh, alpha control or delay angle control is not possible with thyristor switched capacitor unlike a thyristor controlled reactor where alpha control is possible because of the reason that uh, if you go for alpha control in a thyristor control switch that will result in large transient currents and that will instantly damage the thyristor valves. So for transient free switching we know that thyristor valves have 
to be turned on either at positive peaks or at negative peaks of the voltage and therefore alpha control is not possible that's why we don't have thyristor controlled capacitor we have only thyristor switched capacitor and finally i discussed that uh, the maximum voltage and current ratings are determined by the voltage and current ratings of capacitor bank and the thyristor valves and i also discussed that the um, tsc branch acts as a single admittance and to make it a variable admittance many tsc branches are connected in parallel and that changes the admittance of the TSC in a step-like manner like this. So that is all about thyristor switched capacitor TSC, which is also a part, very important part of uh, a shunt compensator at a static wire compensator. Uh, with this, I uh, conclude my today's lecture on TSC and I declare the end of uh, module number two with, uh, with the conclusion of uh, with the end of the lecture on thyristor switch capacitor TSC today, module 2 has also come to an end. Inshallah, in module 3, in next lecture, we will start module 3. And the first uh, topic of discussion in module 3 is the discussion on shunt compensators. And the first shunt compensator that we will discuss is uh, this static wire compensator, SVC. Because static wire compensator has two very important components, TCR and TSC. In module 2, we have discussed both TCR as well as TSC in details. Once we have understood the configuration and operation of TCR and TSC, now we are in a position to understand the operation of static wire compensator. So we will start our module 3 from next lecture. And in that module 3, we will begin with uh, static wire compensator. So I wish all the best to all of you. Thank you.